In the event of an influenza pandemic, healthcare and other ancillary workers may be required to wear disposable high filtration masks, such as P2 or N95 respirators. To ensure maximum safety and protection of the user, these masks must be selected to suit the individual's facial structure, put on correctly, successfully fit checked, and fit tested for the individual. The Australian New Zealand standard Selection, use and maintenance of respiratory protective devices advises employers to provide a fit testing process. Fit testing is a validated method of matching a specific respirator mask to an individual face. A fit check is a quick check to ensure the mask is fitted correctly at the time of use. Fit checking does not negate the need for a fit test. A person may be able to achieve a successful fit check with a selected mask. However, this may not translate to a passed fit test. There are two fit testing methods identified by Standards Australia. Qualitative, often referred to as the Hood method, and quantitative, for example as used by the Port Account Plus with N95 companion instrument. When using either method, you should comply with Australian standards and the manufacturer's instructions. There are advantages and disadvantages for both fit testing methods. Advantages of the qualitative method include relatively inexpensive to purchase, able to be made with readily available materials, it is easily transportable. Disadvantages include it is a subjective test that relies on the ability of the person being tested to taste a solution that is aerosolized within the hood. The person being tested may provide inaccurate information to the fit tester. It can be an unpleasant and messy procedure. Advantages of the quantitative method include it is an objective test using an instrument to measure the particle count behind the mask. The results do not rely on responses from the person being tested. Provision of an electronic record that can be stored and printed can be used as an educational tool to demonstrate the effectiveness of the fit of the mask. Disadvantages include it is a relatively expensive instrument, it can be cumbersome to transport. Regardless of the method used, you can increase the chances of a successful fit test if the person being tested has had previous experience with using a disposable P2 or N95 mask. However, the lack of previous experience should not be a deterrent to performing a fit test. The fit tester should always use the fit testing time to reinforce correct procedure for fitting and removing a mask. Protective eyewear can affect the seal and or fit of the mask. For this reason, protective eyewear should be worn when fit tests are performed to ensure the protection provided by the mask is not compromised when wearing this equipment. Both the qualitative and quantitative methods require the person being tested to perform a standard set of activities. Whilst this is being done, the fit tester or fit testing instrument assesses if there is any indication of leaks around the seal of the mask. There are a total of eight activities. Normal breathing, deep breathing, head side to side, head up and down, talking out loud, grimacing, bending forward, and normal breathing. These simulate the facial movements and activities that may occur whilst performing your normal duties. Quantitative fit testing requires an instrument that measures the concentration of microscopic particles found behind the respirator mask and then compares this to the concentration in the ambient air. The calculation of this is called the fit factor. A fit factor of equal to or greater than 100 is required to pass a fit test. An example of this instrument is the Port Account Plus with N95 companion. If the person has smoked within the previous 30 minutes, the test should be delayed, as recent smoking can interfere with the particle count behind the mask. Once it is established that the test can proceed, 
employee details and the brand, model and size of the mask to be tested are entered into the database. The selected mask is prepared for the test and connected to the instrument. The person being tested has a pendant placed around their neck and then puts on a mask and protective eyewear. They then do a fit check of the mask. If required, you can use the real-time fit factor display. This is an educational component of the program that allows the person to experiment with strap and other mask adjustments whilst watching the effect of this on the fit factor. This is an optional step and is not essential to the fit test procedure. During the fit testing procedure, the person is instructed to perform the standard activities as prompted by the program. Whilst this is happening, the number of particles behind the mask are counted and compared with the ambient air particle count. From this, a fit factor is determined as each activity is completed. On completion, the fit factor results for all the activities, excluding the grimace, are averaged to determine the overall fit factor. If this fit factor is greater than or equal to 100, the mask has passed the fit test for this individual. If this has not been achieved, mask selection needs to be reassessed and a repeat fit test scheduled. A record of the fit test result is provided to the employee, including details of the brand, model and size of the mask fitted. They should also be given a sample of the mask successfully fitted so they can practice the correct procedure for putting on and removing this type of mask. In all, this procedure takes approximately 20 to 30 minutes. More detailed instructions for the use of this instrument are available from the manufacturer.